Welcome to this video lecture where the Laplace transform is defined and we will compute the Laplace transform of some basic functions in order to get an insight on its behavior. So let's get started with what's a transform, okay? Um, right now, you know what's an operator. You are very comfortable working with operators because an operator is something like the derivative you plug in a function of time you compute the derivative and what you get is another function that also depends on time so here the function that is input that is an input depends on time and also the function that is the output also depends on time so the derivative is an operator that has as an input a function of a variable and it, it gives us as an output another function that depends on the same variable, okay? And we are very comfortable with this, we really know this, but now we will introduce a different concept that is the transform. Now, instead of an operator, we call a transform to a, up to now we will thinking is like black box and it's a box where the, the input function depends on a variable t normally we think here in time domain where we live and we are very comfortable living in the time domain and when we apply the transform the output is a function that depends on a different variable and that initially it's a little bit of discomfort, yeah? The, now, this function lives in a different domain that we usually call it the frequency domain, okay? So, a transform is like a black box right now that uses as an input a function in the time domain and it outputs another function in a different domain that now we will call it the frequency domain, okay? So the transforms uh, convert, change the variable of the function. That's very different from the operators that we already know, like for example, computing the derivative of a function. Yeah, the derivative you get here as an input f, you will get here f prime t, a different function, but the, the variable will be the same. So now here we are working with a quite different thing that is called a transform. And in this course, what we are interested in is about the Laplace transform, okay? That's the important one. So I will go straight to the definition about the Laplace transform, okay? The Laplace transform it uses an integral formulation to accomplish this change of variable, okay? Now, let's try to completely understand the definition. Now, this is just notation, okay? This thing here just means the Laplace transform of f of t. And the Laplace transform of f of t, which is this guy, will be a function that will depend on another variable, s. So that's what we are trying to tell here with this notation. The dependence, here we are trying to uh, explicitly show the dependence on s that this Laplace transform will have. So the variable will be different, will be called s. So there's nothing to understand here. This is just notation. This thing means Laplace transform of what we have inside the brackets. And what we get is a function that depends on another variable called s. Now, the definition. The definition is this one, okay? Um, the, La the Laplace transform is uh, an integral, okay? We will compute it using an, an integral. And what we have here is the integral between zero and infinity of the function f of t that we want to compute the Laplace transform 
multiply by the exponential of st. Now, this s here is the variable. Why? Because the dummy variable, the integration variable here is time. You see here time and time here is the integration variable. We are computed a definite integral between zero and infinity with respect to t. So when I compute this integral, uh, the t will disappear yeah, because I'm computing the definite integral. So at the end, this is going to be a function of, of, of s. That's why we say this is a function of s. Another very used notation that I like a lot is to say that this is equal to capital F of s, which is much shorter. So capital F means the Laplace transform of uh, the small case f of t. Okay, so this is the definition. Okay, the Laplace transform is defined using an improper integral. That's very important. It's an improper integral because one of the um, points that defines the, 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 that defines the integral is infinite. So this is an improper integral. And it is basically defined as you can see here, okay? This integral of the function times the exponential. Now, of course, when we have an improper integral, the way to, sol to solve it is by changing this infinite here by another variable that we can call capital T and then incorporate here the limit when this capital T goes to infinity. This is the way to solve this type of improper integrals. So in fact, what we have here is a, a definite integral where this point here goes to infinity. Now we know that this uh, can be convergent, but it can also be a divergent integral, which has no specific value, okay? The Laplace transform will exist when this integral has uh, a specific value, so when it is convergent. So here we have some remarks, some notations that we will use a lot. As I said, I like a lot this notation, capital F of S. This just means exactly the same as this, the Laplace transform of F of T, that is a function of S. Here you have, uh, different functions, of course, we can have as input a function f of t, but the input can be a function that is called g or a function that is called y that will be used a lot in this course when solving differential equations with the Laplace transform. And the convention we have here is that the capitalized letter of the function is used for the Laplace transform. So if the function is called g of t, its Laplace transform is called capital G S. And if the function is called Y of T, then its Laplace transform is called capital Y S, okay? This is the convention we will use in this course to, in many cases, we will try not to write the, the, the longer version, but this very short version. Now, as I have noted before, this, if, integral here that defines the Laplace transform, okay? This, in fact, is the Laplace transform of f of t. We can have in some cases that is not convergent. So in that case, we would say that this function f of t has no Laplace transform. So no, mm, there are functions that do not have a Laplace transform, okay? And in, in fact, we will say that a function f of t is admissible when it has a Laplace transform. So when this integral is convergent and um, it's the Laplace transform of the function, okay? So let's try to compute the Laplace transform of some very basic functions, okay? I will write here the definition, just to recall it, okay? The definition we have about the Laplace transform is the following. If I have a function ft, its Laplace transform will be called capital F of s. 
And the definition is that this is the improper integral between zero and infinity of the exponential of minus st times f of t dt. Okay, that's the definition we have seen, and we will apply this in order to compute now the Laplace transform of f of t, that is going to be a function of s, that in this specific case, we will compute it when f of t is equal to 1, okay, and see what we get, okay? Now, if I use the definition, I should compute the integral of the exponential times f of t, it's 1 in my case, dt, okay? So this is the integral I need to solve. And remember that in order to solve this improper integral, we will change it by a limit and a definite integral between 0 and t. Okay? Now we need to solve the integral. Let's solve the integral first. So I will just copy the part with the limit and solve the integral. This is um, a direct integral. It's just the exponential function itself. But remember that we have in the exponent here minus s, okay? That is just a constant because the, the integration variable is t. So this minus s should be divided. And then this is the definite integral between 0 and t. So let's use Barrow's rule. This will be this function evaluated at capital T minus this function evaluated at zero. That's Barrow's rule. So this function minus the same function, this function, when t equals zero. Now, when t equals 0, the exponential of 0 is 1. And then I have this minus here that with this minus is going to be a plus. So that's plus 1 over s. Okay? Now, the only thing that remains to be solved is this limit. This part do not, does not depend on capital T. So it's constant. So the only part that needs to be solved somehow is this limit. Now, what happens to this limit? Well, if I plot the exponential function, I know that the exponential function has this behavior when I plot e to the minus x, yeah? And that's what's happening here because this minus is here and we, can, we need to assume that s is positive. So that's very important. This limit is going to be zero when s is positive. So it's going to be very, very important that this limit is zero when s is positive. We need to assume that this variable s is going to be positive. Okay? And the result then is that this is one over s because this part is gone, is equal to zero. And that's what you can see in, in these slides and is explained here and here. This is exactly what we did, okay? Now, another basic function that we can try to compute uh, its Laplace transform is f of t equals t, okay? I think we can try to do it a little bit faster following the slide, so let's try it. Here we have the definition of the Laplace transform for a function that is called f. So capital F of s is the Laplace transform. And these are different notations for the same thing. And then here we have just the definition. Okay, This is the definition of the Laplace transform. Now, the next thing is to change f of t by t, because this is the function that I want to compute its Laplace transform. Now. Uh, it's very important that you note here that we already changed this plus infinite here by a capital T and a limit in front of it, okay, to solve the improper integral. Now, the first thing is to solve the integral. So we will just copy the limit and apply integration by parts here 
in order to solve this integral. Okay, that's it's important. So in order to solve this integral, we use integration by parts. And we get what, uh, well, in, in, in fact, you have the detail here of the integration by parts that we are applying. I think that's quite easy. You can try uh, to do it by yourself. And what you will get after applying Barrow's rule, okay, we are applying here Barrow's rule between zero and capital T, okay? Oh, sorry, that was already there. Let me show you. Barrow's rule is detailed here, okay? And this integral must be solved, but now it's a direct integral. It's only the, the exponential function and a constant part because the integration variable is t. So we solve that integral here in this step. The only thing we did is apply a Barrow's rule here. To obtain this, we apply Barrow rule here and we obtain this term. And then we solve this integral to obtain this term that we need to apply Barrow's rule. And here we have the final uh, solution of the integral and only the limit must be computed. This limit is pretty similar to the previous one we did for f of t equals one. This function will go to zero if s is positive. So when s is positive, this is true. That's important to write this assumption. And this limit is going to be zero because the exponential grows much faster than a polynomial. So you can write the exponential if you want. You can write this term like this, t divided as the exponential of st. And as the exponential grows much faster than a polynomial, this limit when t goes to infinity will go down to zero. So this limit when t goes to infinity will be zero, okay? So that's why the only term that remains there is this one, 1 over s square, and this is what we get for the Laplace transform of t. So we could like start our particular Laplace transform table where we will introduce a new notation, okay? We have f of t, we have its Laplace transform, and we can say that when I have here 1, its Laplace transform was 1 over s, when s is bigger than 0. And right now, we, we computed that when f of t is t, its Laplace transform is 1 over s squared when s is positive. So somehow, we have now our particular Laplace transform table. We computed by hand the Laplace transform of these two functions, and we found that these are the results. And we will see that this notation with the arrows will be also used a lot in future lectures, okay? It's another notation that uh, if we know what we are talking about, the Laplace transform, is also very convenient in some, in some places. I will uh, let you try to do by yourself this Laplace transform. The function in this case is the exponential of at where we are just assuming that a is a real number, any real number, okay? And you can try to follow this. I think it's quite easier from what we did previously. And we will, you will see that its Laplace transform is this one, but now the assumption that is that s should be bigger than a. You will see that in order to guarantee that this is positive, you will need s to be bigger than a, okay? So that's the Laplace transform that you will get, okay, for the exponential function. And we can try also to compute for the sinus function. I will skip that because it's a lot of algebra, but nothing more to understand. Maybe it's important that we will add this to our table and just to know that the sinus function has um, a Laplace transform that looks like this, okay? Where omega, that's important, is called the frequency, okay? We will also need this s to be bigger than zero. And the last function uh, that I want to compute the Laplace transform today is a very special function um, 
used a lot with the Laplace transform to solve differential equations. Now, the purpose of the Laplace transform in this course is to solve differential equations, and we will see that this function is going to be very important. This function is called UAT, and it's called the Heaviside or Unitary Step function. The definition of this function is pretty simple. It's a function that is zero when t is smaller than a, and is one when t is greater than or equal to a. So if we plot it, it, it looks like this, okay? We have a point here that is a, and the function is zero when, when t, now the x axis is t, so when t is smaller than a, the function value is zero, and after a, if a is greater than a or equal to a, the value switches to one, okay? So this value here is one, okay? Now, when this a here is zero, for a equals zero, we simply write ut, okay? Normally, we don't write u zero t, we just skip to write a, and we know that it means that it, the, the, the step is located at the origin when a is equal to zero, okay? I think it's pretty st straightforward to understand that this function ut and this function are pretty similar. If, if I could uh, erase the axis, they will look exactly the same. So the difference between these two guys is just the translation. In fact, this function is ut minus a. So it's just a translation, okay? This will be important in next lectures for today. I think it's just nice for you to know that these two functions are very similar. The only difference is that they are translated a distance a, okay? Now, let's compute the Laplace transform of this function ua, okay? Let's do that. Now, let me remember the definition of the Laplace transform. The definition is the integral between zero and infinity of the exponential of minus st times f of t dt, okay? Now, in this particular case, we want to compute the Laplace transform of a function that is this step function ua, okay? So the only thing we did is to copy the definition and replacing f of t by uat, okay? Now, remember who is this function ua? Remember that this is a very simple function that is zero, zero, zero almost all the time. And when it arrives to point A, it switches to this different value one. So if I want to compute the integral of this function times another function, if this function was zero here and I multiply zero by whatever, the result is going to be zero. So there is no meaning in computing the integral between zero and a because I know that the result is zero. Because between zero and a, this function, it's zero all the time. So that's why here we are changing this to this. This is very important, okay? So as the step function between zero and a is zero all the time. I'm not computing the integral between zero and a, I'm just computing the integral between a and infinity. And there, I know that the value of the step function is one. So it's like writing here, this times one, okay? Because the function there, oh, it's written in front of it, okay? So it's like here I have a one, okay? Because the function, the step function between a and infinity has a value of one, okay? So now, this is a pretty simple integral. Um, oh, sorry, Th uh, this is a pretty simple integral, okay, that we want to solve. And what we are doing to, to solve it is, um, 
I don't know. Sorry. Uh, this this integral should not be here. We. Mm. I think we can do it much easier. So I will compute this. Okay, this is uh, the limit when t goes to infinity of the integral between a and t of the exponential. Okay, so I will follow here. This is the limit when capital T goes to infinity. And I will solve the integral now. This is an exponential, so the result is itself. But I need to divide by minus s, and I need to apply Barrow's rule between a and capital T. So this is equal to, and I will follow here, this is equal to the limit when capital T goes to infinity of the exponential of minus s capital T. Oh. minus s capital T divided by minus s minus and I'm applying Barrow's rule here so minus this thing um, evaluated at t equals a so minus with this other minus here is going to be a plus the exponential of minus s a divided by s now this limit here is 0 when s is greater than 0, as we have seen in previous slides. And the result is this one. So you can see that finally, the Laplace transform of the step function is this function here. Of course, when a is equal to 0, the exponential of 0 is 1, and we get 1 over s. So we get here that the Laplace transform of the step function at point zero is one over s. Wait a moment, that does make sense. One over s was already taken, remember? Hmm, remember here? One over s was the Laplace transform of the constant function. Why? Is it possible that for a different function that is zero here, um, zero here and one here, okay? This is ut, the step function is zero before. Uh, let me do this better. Oh, let me, okay. Let me go to the blackboard. I think it's going to be better. Now, what I wanted to say here is that the Laplace transform of the function 1 is 1 over s. And now we have already seen that the Laplace transform of ut is also 1 over s. And the question is, does this make sense? And the answer is yes. Why? Because the definition of Plus transform is the integral between 0 and plus infinity of the exponential times the function. So if I have two functions that look exactly the same from 0 to infinity, they will have exactly the same Laplace transform. And that's what's happening here, because when f of t is equal to 1, I have a function that is always equal to 1. And when, and when f of t is the function ut, I have a function that is 0 here. And then the origin switches to 1. It remains to 1 forever. So the values of the constant function 1 
and the step function, its values are exactly the same from zero to infinity. And those are the only values used to compute the Laplace transform. So the Laplace transform is not unique. Functions that are different before time zero, but have the same behavior from zero and afterwards, all of them will have the same Laplace transform. And that's very important to remember. So that's what I wanted to explain today. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.